Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video we're gonna take this render, which is really cool, and make it better. So now these two renders were sent to me by Dirk Jakubash, I actually requested it because I've seen that on our forum on Facebook and I was like, hmm, that's pretty cool. And I think this is a really cool example of a render that looks really good but there are certain things that could be improved to make it even better so i want to show you how changing a few details can alter an image dramatically and improve it okay so we're going to be talking about certain things in these two renders and we're going to be also hopping into blender and trying to you know um, re-render it and repost processing it so it's going to be a bit of a longer video okay a very quick one before we start guys the free educational materials for hard service in blender or blenderbox.com so go ahead there is a link in the video description you can find their pdf files books courses guides etc and they are both on vanilla content and add-on workflows everything for hard surface is there so go ahead to our website blenderbrows.com and get started so let's go to photoshop and let's look at these two renders so this one is you know the the top one from outstation and that's the second one we're not going to be talking about the third one which shows the back of the gun which is also a cool render but you know we're just going to focus on these two okay so now the the main render the top render is really cool but there are a few things i would change now what I like about it is the framing. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Okay, it's pretty good. The angle is really cool. Okay, the lighting is really good, but it could be better. And we're going to talk about it as well. But the first thing I would change is I would lift it off of the ground. If you see that second image here, okay, that looks much better. It's a bit darker background, so it sort of blends in and it doesn't look so appealing. But if this one was lifted, you can see that there is a contrast between the dark uh, dark shadowy bit of this gun here and the really bright floor but if this was lifted right up you will have this gap here which will separate the shadow all right from the gun because at the moment you have the gun and the shadow being sort of unified into one massive shape which makes this gun appear heavier and bigger but if you split that and you lift it off you're gonna have this gap here which is gonna be showing the bright floor in between the shadow and the gun and it's going to make this whole composition a bit lighter in addition to that you will be able to fill out a bit more of this negative space because when you lift the gun you will need to lower the camera angle so the shadow is going to be a bit lower somewhere here right okay so let me just draw it for you so you understand a bit better um so you will have you know you will have shadow right somewhere here and the gun's gonna be here so in the middle here you're gonna have this gap which means the whole image is gonna be a bit larger okay you're gonna take a bit more of a space in the image right because the shadow's gonna go down and the gun's gonna go up you understand so this gap here okay in the middle here is essential all right another thing is that the light would reflect from the floor back onto the gun onto this side here and you would be able to see a bit more of a detail okay which is really important so it wouldn't be so dark darkness of this image is not a problem okay so when you're gonna go to camera row right and you will look at the histogram okay it's not clipped all right it's not clipped but it's really dark all right this could be a bit brighter so you know i would work with this a little bit and you know punch it a bit more and uh make it stand out a bit better okay so you can see more details right so this is another thing so i'll push this histogram a bit more to the right hand side because you know as is this thing is really dark okay it's really dark right so if i cancel that you see that you know everything is bunched up to the left hand side of the histogram and this one is just this right hand side is just not used meaning the image is really dark this one is even darker you can see that you know this entire bit here is really dark and because of the reflection change of the lighting on the uh, barrels you, these bits here the metal bits are much darker than in this image okay and the reason for that is because the light wasn't changed so now the the thing in this uh the between these two renders the difference is that uh the camera was rotated right so it's rotated to the to the right okay but the light wasn't shifted which means you can see that the reflection on these barrels and the reflection on these barrels here is very different 
because the uh, the deflection of light um, is basically uh, falling at a different angle and it just doesn't really register us in camera as well as in this one because that is really cool right and that's a problem so occasionally when you when you rotate camera check if you shouldn't be rotating the light as well okay that's really important all right so remember about that another thing that it's really kind of problematic i would say is brightness of certain elements in this image if i zoom it out really far okay like here all right what you can see is you can clearly see this light here on the top, right? This light here in this area, right? And then of course you see uh, you see the barrels, right? But when you start zooming in closer, you can start noticing other elements, like for example, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, right? The text, for example, here is really bright, okay? And the text is a very strong visual anchor for two reasons here, because one, it's white, and two, it's a text. So what you want to do is you want to dump it this down a bit. So you want to bring this down in Blender by changing the uh, alpha blend, okay? Uh, um, reducing the alpha visibility uh, in Blender. And I'll show you how to do that with decals when we're going to go to Photoshop, uh, to Blender. But what I would do generally in a situation like this, I would kind of try to use lights, okay, as anchors on most... Um, extreme elements of the gun okay to sort of bring my eyes around the entire shape okay here we have only two lights and are very strong anchors because they are just you know bright spots on 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 a on a very dark gun and because we have these brighter elements here it's not so visible but when you jump to this uh, gun here you can see that these two lights are very very strong especially this one right so what you want to do is you want to uh, move these lights a little bit around the gun, okay? So you're going to have visual anchors between be, between which you can you can sort of jump, okay? Because remember, text, lights, contrast, stuff like that are very powerful. But this is the brightest, uh, you know, point in the image. And the thing is that because there are a lot of details concentrated in this area, you're going to get stuck here, okay? You want to bring people further than this point. You want to bring them all the way here so they can just, you know, be, be drawn here to this point and they're going to be dragged back here, uh, you know, to the back. So you can do this with lights. You can do this with colors. You could put something yellow, red, whatever, like a small, small element, okay? So the, the eye is going to go here and they're going to go back, all right? Okay, another issue with this image is the haloing. Okay, you see that haloing here around the gun? This black haloing here? Now, what I think that happened is that it was just a one render, okay, one image. And um, I think Jacob just created like a rough selection around the gun or basically used the brush and sort of brightened the background. But it's just not accurate. And this haloing will bite you in the ass because it looks really, really dirty, okay? You don't want that. So what you want to do is you want to create two renders, okay? One of them is with a background as such, and two, okay, is going to be just a gun without a background. So you can actually select this in Photoshop, isolate it from the image, and work on the background itself, okay? Alternately, what you can do, you can render three things. So just a background, just a gun, and both, right? So you got everything in one place, and this is exactly what we're going to do, all right? Now, in terms of design, this is really cool. Like I said, I really like the detail placement, okay? It's not overloaded. There are a lot of, you know, empty spaces when you can just travel through. And, you know, it's really cool. There are certain things that pull eyes. Like, for example, I wouldn't put this sticker here in the middle. I would probably offset it somewhere here or even here uh, to the bottom. So it's not in the middle. Because, you got again, you got a really strong clustering of details, okay? You want to sort of, you know, drag them away from one another. So you got islands of details and you're traveling from island to island, okay? You want to jump from two islands of details, okay? That's how it works. So, you know, concentration of details like in this area is fine, but you need also anchors outside that area. They're going to pull you out of it, okay? So the eyes can travel and rest jump to another you know area of detail and just travel again okay so this is going to be much better also brightness of certain elements which i understand are reflections like for example this pipe this pipe is really strong okay they're really strong elements and this is cool but you need to understand that when you look at the image as a whole right this pipe which is almost white 
it's on almost black background. This is a massive contrast pool, okay? It's almost as strong as this light, which means, you, you know, let me zoom out here. You can still see that. You see what I mean? You can see these pipes, this one, this one, right? So this is cool, but I would just drop it down a little bit, okay? So I would just tone it down a bit, you know, make it a bit less uh, reflective, more rough. You can do that before you render, okay? Or after you render, you simply readjust um, materials on your model to fit the reflection to the angle of light. So once you set the HDRI in your blender, you want to render something and see if you don't have any rogue reflections. And if you do, you want to, you know, either work with your light angle or you want to work with the reflectivity of certain elements. You could even duplicate matte on these pipes and create additional material and drop it down in reflectivity so they're not so shiny, okay? So they're going to be bright, let's say like matte like this, but not shiny, okay? That's the problem because you see, if you shift the angle at which the light falls, like this is a bit more matte, but this one is way more reflective because there's a plane shift here, right? And that's why the light reflects at a different angle. And that's what's causing this reflection. This is cool, but that is really strong, okay? Really strong. And the reason for again is because the the background here is a shadowy area, okay? It's a, you know, concave area. There's a lot of darkness. And you got this massive, you know, kind of a bright cable going across, you know, this this place. Yes. So let me show you what happens when I'm gonna separate this background, okay, from the from the gun. Yeah. Just you know, GZ and move it a little bit. So GZ and move it down. And you see now the gun becomes a bit smaller, right? Because the shadow gets separated. But also <clears throat> the entire image, so the gun in and the shadow is a bit bigger because it's taller, right? Because of this gap. So you got a better definition here, and you got taller of an image, so you take more of a space in the frame, which is great. You know, this could be approached in many ways. You could you could approach it from a 16 by 9 perspective, but you could also go 21 by 9, which is going to be 3, 4, 40 by um, 1440. And then what you want to do is you want to lock it to view and sort of readjust it a little bit, you know, um, and uh, play a bit with an angle. But let's go with the same... Um, with the same framing. What I wasn't crazy about in this framing here, so let me just zoom out, is that gun is actually not just in the middle, but it's closer to the right hand side here, right, than to the left hand side. It's almost the same, but actually this area here is larger, and that is no good. And why it's no good? Because that's a face of the gun, okay? Gun is facing clearly this way, that's the front of the gun, right? So if this is a front of the gun, that's a face, okay, for me, right? I want this face to be not so close to the um, to the edge. The face is sort of turned towards to, which means if I'm looking, okay, or my gun is looking, okay, this way, I want it want it to offset it to the left, okay. So what I would do here instead of framing it this way, right, I would create something like this. Let me show you. So I would just you know frame it like that, okay. Don't don't mind the text; it's gonna get cut off, but it's okay, right? I would you know position it closer to the left hand side, okay? Offset it a little bit; it's gonna look a bit better, okay? Do not put stuff in the middle. I'm repeating that every single bloody time, and it's really important. So in this case, what I would do, right? I would uh, grab this camera and manipulate with it until I'm satisfied, okay? So uh, grab my camera and lock to view and let's see what we can do also we can zoom in a little bit okay you can fill that frame really well you can get really close here but the left hand side should be closer than the right hand side also you know don't clip off the shadow it's gonna look weird because the shadow now has to be in the image okay so i'll position it somewhere here okay so the gun isn't in the middle of the frame uh in terms of horizontal view so it's not in the middle Right, slightly drop below, so it's offset on the horizontal and on the on the vertical. So that's really important, and you got a lot of space here, right? And that's a better framing. It's not much of a, not much of a cha change, but it's trust me, it's quite important. Now let's unlock this from the view because we don't need this anymore. Let's now grab these pipes right here and let's drop the reflectivity a bit of this material. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna duplicate it by clicking here, and we're going to. Uh, increase the uh, roughness of it. I think this is a 
um, yeah, the metallic go through, I mean, the roughness go through here. So what we need to do is go to the, uh, we need to go here to the node setup and go to object and let's see that. There we go. Let's just increase that, okay, a little bit to maybe 0 0.7. Oh, that's too rough, okay. Uh, let's say 0 0.7. How's it now? It's a bit better, but maybe it's too much. Let's say 0 0.5. Yeah, that's that's kind of acceptable. You see, it's a little bit less shiny. Okay, so I think it's gonna be a bit better. And you know, this would do. And I think we can render it now. This light here is really strong. Okay, it's really strong. So what I would do is I would add some lights that offset this massive light here on the top. Okay, so we could do this with decals, right? And see, now you're going to get eyes being sort of anchored and, and guided all over the place uh, in terms of lighting. So this is a little bit better. Now this Vulcan, I told you that it was a bit too strong. Now um, it was at 100% opacity in terms of alpha. This is too strong, guys. This is a white decal on black background. It's way too strong. Hold shift and drop that thing, okay, to like, I don't know, four, uh, 0 0.4 or something like that, okay? Don't make it too strong, okay? Because, you know, text is a really strong visual anchor, okay? Also, um, this one is really close to this light. These are two very strong visual anchors. Remove one, okay? It's going to be much cleaner. Or, what you could do is, you know, move this a bit to one of the sides. So, let's say, you know, move it somewhere here, okay? Offset it. And then remove this one. So you're going to have a long travel between this and this. And a lot of empty space here. It looks much cleaner. Okay. So these small changes could really, uh, you know, ch change the whole dynamic of, of the thing. Okay. Let's just save it. And if you have a really dark um, HDR, I mean, you know, dark background, you're, you're not going to have much light. Because, you know, to get more light, what I would need to do, I would need to brighten up the HDRI. So I need to go here to color. Uh, and here, and you know, I'll need to brighten it up, right? So then the light's gonna get reflected. But this is not what we're going for. We're going for a darker theme. So what you need to do instead, go to world, and need to pump that HDRI from one to something higher. Another thing that you can do, right? Let's just leave the camera view for a second. Um, you don't want this background to be so goddamn huge, okay? Because you don't need that background to be so goddamn huge, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the edit mode and we're going to literally draw it with a knife here like this, okay? All right, press space, click that and delete it, right? You're wasting a lot of light, okay? You're obstructing a shit ton of light by the way you uh, structured your, uh, you know, uh, by the way you run your background. See how much light you're obstructing? Look at this. You, you don't need any of this junk, okay? Look how much light you were obstructing. So now you see that we, we're getting all this light back. This is much brighter and much more interesting, um, you know, image here. If you want to change this background to a bit darker, what you can do is drop the reflectivity again. So you can just increase the roughness of it. So you could go to, um, you could go to, you know, like specular and just, you know, drop it down to bring the same quality of the, of the mud that you had before. So it's a bit darker. But you know, it looks a bit cooler. Let's just shade it smooth. What the hell is going on here? Oh, it's in the noiser. You see that like kind of like a n noisy, nasty kind of a mangled sort of area. That's what this new denoiser in viewport does. I fucking hate it. I turned this shit off. I want it nice and grainy because that's the better representation of what ha what's happening in my in my um, you know in my image. So that's much better, guys. And you know, this this is something I could stand behind. So in terms of rendering, we're gonna be doing this in cycles. Uh, GPU compute, of course. Uh, Mark samples. We're gonna be using that's madness. Three fifty is enough. In fact, we can do with three hundred. And turn off this garbage. We're gonna go to compositing and use notes. And uh, we don't need glare really because this is going to glare really is going to introduce a lot of uh, it's going to pick up all these um, these reflective areas like the pipes and make them really more reflective. So what you want to do is you want to amplify the um, the lighting uh, and the bloom in post 
or create two renders, one of them with Glare, one of them without it, and amplify this, or use plugins like Oniric in Photoshop, okay, so, you know, like this one, Oniric, okay, I can show you how to do it later, but anyway, this will do. Now let's talk about the uh, light path, so let's go to here, yeah, and this is not enough, okay, if you're using decals, there's no way you can use transmission network, it needs to be at least, at least seven, I would say eight, same here, because you need this for alpha uh, maps, diffuse I'll go here quite high, because reasons, uh, this one I would even use 18, you're probably gonna go 12, 8, 8, 8, but I'm gonna go really high with this one, it has a lot of reflections, right, and uh, we can turn them on, and I think we're gonna be fine, and we can just um, render that, now uh, let me see the quality of an output, you wanna go with stiff 16-bit mate, because there's better quality, and now we can render this, okay, so let's go here, and let's try to render this and see what we're gonna get, yeah, that's much better, see, that's much better, we got some uh, fireflies here, but it's gonna get cleaned up, so don't worry about it, boom, fireflies gone, cool, so let's save that, and that's gonna be uh, our image number one, so one, right, and then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna hide the background, okay, so let's just dump, jump to a background, let's just select that and jump to a background, and let's turn it off in render, and render the image. You see, that will open the shadows here by a ton. We can actually use it to our advantage. Now, you see that this render shows the entire gun and all the details. And then, when you're going to be adding contrast to it and other stuff in Photoshop, it will not look muddy. So, it just took a few seconds to render. What, 10 seconds? So, use the noiser, mate. You don't need to use 10,000 samples with this. It's just pointless, okay? All right, cool. Oh, I didn't check the alpha. Hang on. I need to render this one more time, and we need to go here to output, and we need to enable RGBA for um, for alpha background, because I need to have transparent background for it. There we go, that's better. Cool, so now here we can see that what we can do, because we have this cutout, and, and it's just a bit brighter on the bottom, there's no, there's no background to obscure our our lighting, what we can do is you can adjust this fill here to pump a bit more light into shadows, not too much, but you want a bit of, because you want to see these details on the bottom, right, and then shift control alt and need to bring it to the top, and now we're going to play with the, um, uh, with the camera raw, so let's go here to camera raw filter, and uh, let's just, you know, pump a bit more light here, and we can open up the shadows, and we can just pump some clarity here to make it more punchy, Lift some black so it's not too dark, okay, and control and apply this perfect. Let's run some, um, you know, let's run some filters on this one. This one looks really cool. I like that. Uh, I don't have any text, but uh, you can imagine this could be a text in here or even on this side it would be better because now this side is a little bit busy. So what I would do here maybe put a logo, okay, just put a logo here right, like this, or like this, and then put the text here, a larger one, and something on the bottom, like a sig, beautiful framing for this one, right, camera filter, and we can drop a vignette here, so, you know, like that, to bring it in a bit, right, and then feather it in, and play with roundness a bit, and midpoint, and do something like this. We could bring this further to, you know, stuff like um, Nick Collection. Let's go to ColorFX Pro and we can play with the Pro Contrast, which is one of my favorite filters. Let me just reset this. Um, and let's see what we can do here. Select this gun here with Control and run a mask on it. So it's gonna affect only the gun which feather separates it from the background and you see you don't have any nasty haloing here because you're working just with the gun this is the beauty of it right and then on top of it what we can do is we can run some smoke on it right so we can go to a brush and grab a smoke brush or mist okay let me just find something cool like this for instance right grab one of these colors here the bright ones and you know run a mist on this and we could hide it behind the mask and then what we can do is select this gun again and put the put the smoke behind the gun right so you can put it behind the gun like this 
and then you can reduce the opacity of this right or you can for example go with a soft light or just reduce the opacity you know and just add a little bit of smoke here you see kind of like that and the gun is smoke and you can uh, drop the opacity of this mask here with a brush so you could grab a brush uh, drop the opacity uh, to let's just grab a regular brush okay soft one drop the flow here to like maybe 10 percent and you could paint with a white mask on that gun here to bring a bit of smoke to the front okay so it's not just behind the gun but it's also in front of the gun especially in the bottom right see kind of envelop it with the smoke a little bit and look at this looks pretty fucking badass and then what we can do on top of that we can run some of the coloring effects on it so we could just go to filter again and go to something like for example cross processing okay so let's go to cross processing here and you know do something like that and boom i mean how cool is this right and then you put your logo here your text here and you're done so we could do this very easily, um, you know, the name is Vulcan, right? So we could move this uh, name, actually, wait a minute, where are my fucking decals? Oh, yeah, we removed it from here, right, right, right. This Vulcan is still fucking strong, you see that, how strong this shit is? Man, what I would do, actually, I would, uh, what I would do here is I would grab this, right? And I would uh, run a content aware tool on it. Okay, so let's run the content aware tool on it and uh, to remove it completely, okay? And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna just drop the opacity of it, okay? So watch. See what I mean? So it's there, but it's not just in your face, okay? You wanna see that, but you don't wanna be drawn by it. This is this is a subtle difference, okay? You wanna see that, but you're not drawn by it. See now these lights here on these edges? They will guide your eyes all over the gun, okay? All around, right? Same with this one. This one is a little bit strong, okay? This one is a little bit strong, right? So what you want to do is, you know, drop it down. So, content over fill. Okay. And just, you know, boom, right? It's a little bit more civil. We got some bending here uh, because of so many effects layer down. So what we can do is go to um, Topaz and denoise it. And we're going to run a strong the bending. Or even strongest with the bending. There we go, sorted, and uh, this should solve our problem. Boom, clean. So there you go, finished. This one is a little bit, you know, this one could could use a bit of work. So what we could do is uh, select this area here and run a content over on this one. So. and fix it there we go solved because it was also pulling this one is also strong but it's okay and uh, there's a you know shadow now you have beautiful separation you can see the clearly the silhouette of the whole, of the entire gun nothing pulls too much attention there's still light is still you know the light here on top is still strong but it's been sort of um balanced by these uh, these barrels these pipes here are not too flashy now they're not pulling that much attention also the shadows are way more visible so you can see the details inside of the gun and this is in my opinion a far better approach to that render because a you can see the gun and the lighting is more uniform you can see all the details and it's also a bit dramatic so it's not super bright not super dark this doesn't really show all the details of the gun but still it's a decent render but I think this just shows, you know, shows it in a whole different light. And uh, is there some kind of a shading problem here? That's interesting. It looks like a pool. You can fix it, by the way, by uh, running a clone stamp tool on a lower settings. Let's say, I don't know, 4% maybe. Maybe it's... They should fix it. Yeah, there we go. So you can cheat a little bit. There we go. Sorted. So it's a little bit better, right? Yeah, you can see that streak now, so stuff like that. Okay, well, that's it, you know, and uh, like I said, text, you know, text here, we could just put Vulcan. I um, mean, it's not going to be the same font. I'm not sure what font you're using. Vulcan, um, if I can spell it. So you could put it in here and, you know, make it a little bit more narrow. It's a bit more aggressive because the gun is narrow, so you need to kind of follow the theme, right? 
and uh, this would do let's drop it down a bit because it, Jesus Christ is bright see what I mean and then you could have some signature here in the bottom and some log on the top and you sort it so anyway guys thanks for watching hope you learned something useful thanks so much for sending a work really like the design by the way so play with the render because you know you spend so much time on modeling this thing uh, I would just you know have a bit more fun with it and I'll see you guys in the next one